46 minutes worth on that battery there. Anaerobic sealants are typically used between two machine surfaces. What does anaerobic mean? That means that it sets up and it turns into a solid when there's no air. Anaerobic. Air, aerobic's got to do with the air, and anaerobic means there's not any air. Where there's not any air, that's when it turns into a... It's a jelly. It looks like Smucker's jelly. Is that why that stuff that we used on that van at one time? Blue tube. No, no, no. It's got it. Look like Indian on it. I don't even remember. I remember. I know what you're talking about. But uh, this stuff I'm talking about, if you squirted some of it in your hand, you think you had grape jelly in your hand. But yeah, when you, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. But when you squeeze it in between two machine surfaces, then why do we use that? We use that when we don't want to put a gasket in there that's going to change clearances. See what I'm saying? You know, because if you put a gasket in there, those parts are just a teeny little bit further apart than they were before you put the gasket in there, right? Yeah, all right, so that's what that's for. Uh, and number two is uh, to prevent a part from rotating on a shaft, uh, set screws are used. Is that true or false? Not an engine is not. Well, both of those are true. To prevent a part from rotating on a shaft, set screws are typically used. Ordinarily, they'll have a, uh, a keyway, and then the set screws will go against the key, you know. But uh, shops will pay the technician for a repair comeback. No. No, they will not. <laughs> if you're if you're getting paid commission like uh, like Wes is getting paid where he's working over there, and you fix something and it wasn't done right, like if they said the valve cover gas is leaking, right? And you pull it off and you put it back together, and when you're putting it back together, you folded the valve cover gasket, and now it's leaking worse. You gotta fix it for free, when you come back. Uh, they're not gonna let you. They're not gonna pay you again for that. Only comeback I've ever had was a Mexican. Come back. And couldn't understand. He couldn't understand you, and you couldn't understand him. Mm-hmm. He had a Oldsmobile with a newer 350 in it that was carburetor. I'm talking like a newer 350, out of like a, a Chevrolet truck. Mm-hmm. And they had some kind of rigged up power steering crap. And he brought us the tank. You know, and we told him we don't want to put it on there because it'll probably leak. Blah blah. blah. What to do? It leak. Yeah. So. Yeah. It didn't leak until it got hot. I mean, it gets that power steering got hot like that. Yeah. Boiling the power steering for the. Well, they had no cooler on it. No, I know. We told him that. Yeah. He was, he, Mike got an interpreter there just how serious it got. And the guy said it didn't have one before and all that good stuff. And the reason why is because he was running that much power steering fluid and brought on that cooler and it wasn't bubbling up out of it. I mean, mm-hmm. I, yeah, he wasn't burning enough for it to boil out. Right. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Well, if you've got a communication uh, breakdown, you got issues anyway. Yeah. Oh, by the way, George uh, said he went to work at uh, Enterprise Chevrolet. George who? Reyes. You know, Jorge. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he just went up. I don't know what they got him doing, but he, he sent me a Facebook message said he's working at Enterprise Chevrolet. He, he doesn't graduate? No, he didn't graduate. He just had to sit out this summer because he didn't have the finance, financial, you know. But that was pretty cool. I mean, that he, he just walked. He said he went up there and applied, and they hired him right away. He said he couldn't believe it. But I don't know what they got him doing. He said they're not doing they're, he don't, He's not doing what he wants to do, but he's, he's working right. there. But uh, anyway, all the following factors of a bolt, uh, bolt identification except, let's see, all are factors of bolt identification except right. length, diameter, thread, pitch, or shank. Length. No shank. Come on. Shank. Yeah. Where you stab someone with like a, <laughs> like a pencil or something. <laughs> what is shank? The shank is actually going to be the part between the head and the thread. That's <laughs> right, my okay. that's my reading of that. Yeah. Um, and that's actually going to be the you know the answer to that one's actually going to be D. Now number six. We're going to hurry through these. It won't be long here. On a metric bolt. The strength number indicated on the head is eight point eight. This is considered to be what? Uh, you know about Medium that? Medium to high? Uh, hmm? It's basically a common grade. Oh, really? It'll be like a grade five in a a, 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 a bolt. What was four? True. Number four? Oh, I'm sorry. We missed that one. Maintaining a professional appearance, language, and behavior will assist the technician in advancing the field. Come on. You needed to ask that question? You know, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I, that I really, uh, that I'm really supposed to require in here is for you guys to dress like me and Wes. That's supposed to be required in I here. It wasn't in Everybody here. that's in here is supposed to really be dressed like me and Wes. And he was wearing a mechanic shirt yesterday. You know, I mean, I don't hammer on that, 
but I try to encourage you guys. I mean, you know, I can't sit here and hold you under my thumb and say, you, that's it, you're going to love it right today. I mean, if you're, even if you show up with a T-shirt and blue jeans and you're willing to work, I'm kind of happy to see you. You know, just like in some of the car dealerships I've worked at, I would see some of the best mechanics there would show up in tank top T-shirts in the summer. That was cooler. I never did because I always, you know, I've worn uniform for 40 years. <laughs> you know, I just get used to it. You get used to uniform. You get what? You get everything washed for $10 yeah. a camp. we got to get through here because Shelby's turning into a skeleton over there. Chelsea! Yeah, yeah, Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. She, she was awake enough to hear that, so I guess she's hearing everything else. <laughs> to provide critical sealing, head gaskets must contain combustion pressure. Must, you know, one other is must contain. That means they got to hold combustion pressures in. That are, are how much? D. 2,500 PSI. I'm going to more than that. No. <coughs> to ensure proper sealing of engine seals, the technician should do all of the following except A. Install them in the correct direction. I'd say that's right, isn't it? Use a hammer. B. Use the proper sealant. C. Lubricate the lip seal. Or D. Use a hammer. C. Now that is a no brainer question. You don't use a hammer. To become ASC certified, and that's this right here. Technician must pass the ASC test and prove work experience equal to what? Two years. Two years. Now, you can actually, this program, when you go through this program, it gives you one year of credit toward that because it's an ATF certified program. Two years, uh, an additional year in the field, and you get the patch. Okay. However, when you pass those, and they send you a paper saying you passed them, you've got that to show somebody. Even if you ain't got the patch, you can go say pass, 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 pass. I have ten ASC certifications. We're over here. Yeah. But anyway. yeah. yeah, but anyway, I just got my I just got my tenth one when they came out with that light truck diesel, and I went and took that, and it was. Uh, I got one There were sixty questions on there. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. Usually, when I miss a question on an ASC test, it's because it was a poorly written question, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my excuse. Anyway, this is that's what I'm thinking. All right, uh, they'll tell you how many questions you miss. They just won't tell you which ones. Um, tech, most technicians start out working on what's called what? <coughs> Number 10. Most of them start out working on uh, straight time, basically. Straight time. Yeah, I mean, most of them will start working out like on the clock, but it won't be. See, what they'll do is they'll say, we'll pay you uh, $9 an hour straight time or we'll pay you $16 an hour commission. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so most, most guys that are good at doing the work and are fast would rather work on commission because they make more money that way. You know what I mean? So you can basically, but here's the thing. Always spend less than you make. If you know, if the crappiest week you have, let's say it's going to be a $400 a week or $500 a week, pay yourself $500 a week and rat hole the rest of it for the, for the really, you know what I'm saying? That's how you're going to do that. You're going to pay yourself, you know, where you can average it out. But you need to manage your money really good. And instead of wasting it all on the week when you made a really good week, that's kind of dumb. Uh, and then next week you're, you know, uh, you're in bad shape. You gotta manage your money well, okay? And Mr. Richard at Lotus looked like yesterday. Huh? At Lotus, there's a bunch of them in Enterprise. Yeah, I didn't ever see one before, but I saw that one. There's a bunch of them. Well, there's I probably one. I probably never just pulled up behind one at the droplight or the stoplight. <laughs> droplight. To, ex- to remain ASC certified, each test station must certify for how many years? Five. Five years. ASC certification tests are offered. Now, this right here is a question that's kind of silly because now that they're doing it on computer, you can take those rascals just about every month. Really? Yeah. You don't have to wait until the twice a year thing. You can take it every month. So it's twice a year? Huh? So it's, what it used to be twice a year. That's what. That's basically what it's supposed to be. It used to be spring and fall, but now they do it anytime. And you go over to Dothan to that little Prometric test center, and you go in there, and that guy runs a wand all over you, and he makes you empty your pockets and put them in a locker. You can't take a phone. You can't take a calculator. You can't take nothing in there. When you go in that room, you ain't wearing nothing but hardly your underwear. I mean, you know, he says, this guy takes it everything. You know, but he wouldn't even let me have a piece of candy. You know, I'm serious. I had a little uh, lifesaver or something in my pocket. And, you know, I said, I don't know, I may need a piece of candy if my blood sugar gets low. And he goes, no, you can't do that. Put it in here. God. Yeah. And so I said, so. But, anyway, uh, but anyway, I blew the tests away anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. All right, so you guys going to blow the test away when you go take it? Chelsea? I hope so. Yeah, you going to take it? Can you dress right. up as me? Huh? Huh? Can you dress up as me? Uh, well, they, they look at your driver's license, and they you know they do the little voyeuristic thing where they beat the back of everything tell them when the first time you dirtied your diaper was. And they're going to look at me, and they say, I know you weren't born in 19, uh, you know, whatever it was. And where were you born? 
95. Okay. I know you were born in 1995 because you're too old. All right. To measure a specific rotation of a bolt, what should be used? Hammer. You've used one. A hammer. Torque angle gauge. A torque angle gauge is what that is, right? A twisting okay. force. That, huh. What? Okay. You remember how we were talking about getting a spark plug gap even with the intake valve? How do you do that? I mean, I understand you gotta have a little. You gotta have shims. How do you? I mean, how do you know exactly where it is? You're gonna. Well, you're gonna take your spark plug. Where's my spark plug at? I got a spark plug here somewhere. Oh, here we go. Here's a spark plug. Here's a spark plug that wasn't tightened up good, and it you know got cooked in the cylinder head. Brandon. Random. No, it wasn't Brandon. It was somebody else. But anyway, uh, see where this. Uh, see where this is right here. Uh -huh. All right, you gotta make a mark there. Make a mark where? Just gonna make a mark up that side of the plug. I'm gonna take my. I'm going to say, okay, this is where my ground electrode is. And I'm going to mark up a side of the plug like that. And you know where the valve is. Sometimes. Well, okay. You know where the valve is. And when you, put, you shim up under that, and you pull it down until the valve is on the opposite side. Now, you can mark this, this side that you want. It. Either way you mark it, you're going to know when you're screw it in which way it's pointing because you made a mark. Got it? That's how you do that. But, uh, oh, a spark plugs overheat like that if you don't tighten them down all the way. Yeah. Here you go, Chelsea. Have a look at that. Can you catch it? No. It bounced off your glass. I'm afraid it's going to break it. Yeah. Also, All right. Twisting force measured in foot pounds or newton meters is known as what? Torque. Joint between two stationary components can be sealed with. What's that stuff we call? Gaskets. All right. Proper application of sealants and adhesives is used to good engine blank and reliability Same. performance. It was, you know what I like to do when I'm putting a, something on, if there's any way I can possibly do it, I like to put gaskets on without any kind of sealant, unless they call for it. If they don't call for any sealant, I don't put that on there. If I have to keep it in place, I put a little bit of tacky stuff on it, but not very much. If I'm going to put a water pump on, I'm going to glue the gasket to the water pump, so that way when the next guy pulls it off, the gasket mostly comes with it, and he ain't got to scrape. And I've seen people putting this yellow gorilla snot on both sides of every gasket. You know, and I think yeah, and that what that does. Now it helps you keep from having leaks. But sometimes, if you put too much silicone on it, balls of that silicone will squish out and get into the system and clog things up. Yeah. Just a little bit, like a finger rub of it. It's not too bad. But I used to. I mean, what I always like to do is put it together with nothing at all on them. If everything's like it's supposed to be, it'll seal it with just nothing but a piece of you know well, gasket. That's a perfect world. Huh? So that's in a perfect world. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. My, yeah, my world is a perfect world. Okay, sorry. A federal mandated system known as Blank. OBD2. Right, OB2. well, OB2. Uh, in the mid 1990s. OBD twice. You know how OBD3 works? No, I haven't. You ever heard anything about OBD3? Yeah. You never read my Digital Superman book? No. If you, you did, I talk about OBD3 in there, one place. All right. When performing a repair, it's the technician's responsibility. To reflect, effectively describe the customer's concern, problem, cause, and corrections. Okay, what's condition, cause, and correction? Mr. Stokes, on the vehicle that you're working on out there today, what was our initial condition? We had two things wrong with that car when we started working on it. What were they? Uh, running real rough. Running rough at idle. And, and it was running hot. Okay, so we had rough idle, no reason. Okay, what was the cause of these two? What was the cause of the rough idle? Broke tube, mad, bad mass airflow sensor. If you look those cars up, there's mass airflow sensors dropping like flies on those cars all over the place. So it ain't unusual to have that. Right. Okay. The other problem was what? Uh, I mean, the, the overheating. Okay. So basically, you've got rough idle running hot. That's the condition. The cause is going to be the cracked air, the cracked air tube, bad mass airflow sensor, uh, radiator fan inoperative. Is going to be for the you know they got two basically different conditions. Now on a repair order, on a repair order usually they'll have different repair lines. And this one here will say idles rough. And this one here will say runs hot. And this this might be at idle, which is if it runs hot at idle, you're immediately suspecting what fans big time. Okay, so then over here you're going to say. Um, Cracked air tube, and then correction is replace the air tube. See that? That's how that is. Condition calls correction. That's how you're supposed to do that. Okay, um, so number 18, uh, you're going to put warranty. 
warranty. warranty repair. You also need to write that sucker up so they won't charge a ticket back and make sure you take the ticket to the clock and punch on and off every time. Boom, boom. Like, you know, when you start on the job, boom, you punch on. When you go to lunch, boom, you punch off. When you come back from lunch, boom, you punch on. When you're through the job, boom, you punch off. And then when the warranty auditor comes and they look at the ticket, they can say, hey, this guy was fastidious. He punched on and off and he told me a story. I checked this, I found that, I did this, this indicated that, I went there, I found that, and they got no reason to charge it back. But if you just threw an engine in it, even if it needed it, and they say, you say, ran, run, ran hot, replaced engine. They say, excuse me? I don't know why you replaced this engine. I said, that's it, charge back. <clears throat> Reject. $5,000 comes out of the dealer's pocket. I'm telling you, you better write that sucker up good. Um, ASE, ASE certification is blank, but employers prefer... Uh, is voluntary, basically, is what. You know, employers prefer ASC certified technicians. If you go to get a job somewhere and you can show them you got ASC certification, you're probably going to get hired over somebody that doesn't, unless they know you and they know that you can do the work. But if, yeah, that's right. You got to get good. When the technician is paid by the job hour, the method of payment is called flat rate. You got that? By the hour? By the job hour. Oh, it's called what? The job hour is called flat rate. Flat rate. Flat rate, you know, you know, everybody know how flat rate works, right? Wes can tell you how flat rate works. If the book says it takes two and a half hours to change his water pump, he gets paid his labor rate. He may, yeah, he needs to get his labor rate. He gets paid that much times his labor rate, and even if he gets it done in an hour, he still gets paid two and a half hours times his labor rate. Yeah, yeah, no, that's on the clock, but you'll get more per hour, and Wes gets paid. Uh, Really strong over there where he's at. Now, see the thing about think about this, Wes. If you were getting paid seven twenty five an hour, it wouldn't be worth your time over there, would it? <laughs> he wouldn't. Work, he wouldn't work there. But as soon as he walked in the door, they give him twenty eight dollars an hour commission. So if he turns two and a half hours in an hour's time, he made some heavy money in that hour, didn't he? You know what I'm saying? At the end of the week, got a pretty decent paycheck. Even if he does have to go to speech. Hey, you got a speech today? Huh? You got a speech today? Yeah, I got it by a You got to do it the hard way. What? No, we got a Nissan truck. Okay. All right.